More problems with old model steam engines. Once again this is a Stuart 1010V and I've been sent this from a customer in the Isle of Man. And it's far better than the previous one that I showed. That is a real rough engine but this one is very nice. It's very well made. But it doesn't work. So this video is just an assessment of what is wrong with the engine. The first things are obvious. Some of the nuts are missing from the steam chest. And there isn't a displacement lubricator so there's just a hole where that should be. That will need plugging. Before I start this job though I need to quickly go up to Blackgate's engineering for some parts. I need some 7BA nuts because I don't have any of those. And while I was there I thought I would buy a new bandsaw blade and a piece of silver steel because I intend to make two crankshafts very shortly. One for the last horrible engine that I showed you and one for the Stuart twin launch that I'm working on. So the piece of silver steel will be for pinning the crank webs to the crankshaft. Talking about crankshafts, this is a crankshaft on the triple expansion engine I'm about to work on. So whilst I was at Blackgate's I also got some cast iron discs to make flywheels for this because at the moment I cannot turn it over by hand. And I'm certainly not going to put my hand in the crank webs to turn it over when I've got any compressed air attached to it because I need my fingers for other jobs. Model engineering can be a really rewarding hobby but it can be very frustrating if you do not have the parts you want at any given time. I used to waste an awful lot of time rummaging through drawers looking for specific nuts and bolts. So what I tend to do now when I go up to Blackgates I buy some more nuts and bolts of various types. I'm going to put the engine on my manually operated turntable so you can have a close look at it. I do like Stuart engines and by the way once again I don't have a connection with the company itself I just like the product. Most of the engineering on this engine is done to a very good standard. As you can see things seem to fit not like the other engine which is a disaster area and the valve gear functions very smoothly. As I move the lever the expansion link slides across the die block very easily. The purpose of this video is to show an assessment of what's wrong with the engine so that I can quote for a repair. So the first thing I notice is that the engine smoothly turns over. There are no tight spots and the crankshaft looks like it's held together not like the last one which was falling apart. Without further ado I'm going to put some compressed air into the engine and see what happens. But the first thing to do is to fit a blanking plug. This hole on the inlet manifold is where the displacement lubricator would normally be fitted. But this engine doesn't have a displacement lubricator and it's no good having a hole on the inlet manifold. So I'm just using a blanking plug to blank it off. Normally I would mention about not over tightening the blanking plug but there's no chance of that at the moment because I can't find my spanner. Ah, here it is. This is my action man and he's approximately one foot tall. And he comes in quite useful in the workshop for illustrating the scale of the engines that I work on when I need to show how big they are. And now with the compressed air line firmly connected to the engine it's time to turn on the air supply and see what happens. I can hardly contain myself. Well I can see an oil leak around the steam chest but there aren't any gaskets in there I don't think so that's easily explained. And there's a lot of air coming out of the exhaust pipe. And when I turn the flywheel, nothing happens. No power, not even a glimmer. So what's going on here? About five or six things go through my head that it could be. But the thing that's wearing me most of all is there's no power. It's not even trying. Let's have a look at the eccentrics. Hmm, that's not right. One of them's going round and the other one isn't. And the other one sort of rotates randomly. But the two that are going round are not that far out of the position that they should be. So I think I will have a quick look in the steam chest. Initially the steam chest I'm going to remove is the one at the back of the engine. Because this does not have a lever in place. So I can just slide the bracket off the shaft. Well eventually. This is very well machined. It's a very nice fit. A word of advice for those of you who are very inexperienced at working on model steam engines. I don't mean the people who tell me how to do it, because I get a lot of people doing that, sending me messages telling me how I should be doing things. I really mean any people out there working on their first model steam engine. Here are some important points to note. Firstly, do not put too much pressure on the components, they will break. 
What I'm doing at the moment with a screwdriver is poking about in the steam chest and illustrating the point that the slide valve needs to float on the bar that moves it up and down. If the slide valve is stuck to the bar, it will be held off the steam chest and you'll get a similar result to the one I've been getting, whereby a lot of the air is just blowing to the exhaust. But in this case, that does not seem to be the problem. After applying some lubricating oil, I'm going to refit the bracket and I'm going to use some of my new 7BA nuts that I bought from Blackgates to bolt it all together. There aren't any gaskets visible, but at the moment this is just an assessment. If I get the job of repairing the engine, I will of course be fitting gaskets to all parts of the engine that needs them. You will of course notice that this part of the video is speeded up, and this is just a measure to prevent any viewers from inadvertently slipping into a coma. And here we see the importance of gaskets. Even with the steam chest bolted to the engine, it is still leaking, and it's leaking quite badly. And it's also leaking around the inlet manifold. So what I'm doing at the moment is injecting some oil into the inlet manifold for two reasons. One is to lubricate the cylinders, because I don't know what they're like. And the other one is to see where the leaks are coming from. Because if it's leaking, the oil should bubble out. And as you can clearly hear, the air is just blowing straight to the exhaust. And pumping out quite a lot of oil from the steam chest. But it should be doing something. As I turn over the engine, I should feel some kind of a resistance on part of the stroke. But no, there's nothing. And the leak is getting really bad. I know it looks like the engine's moving, but it's not, it's an illusion. It is by hand. And this engine is bereft of life. I'm rapidly coming to the conclusion that even though this is a very well-made engine, there is something seriously wrong. The slight movement that you've just seen is the nearest thing I've come to a power stroke on this engine. Really speaking, an engine with three quarter inch bore cylinders and three quarters of an inch stroke should be very powerful with the amount of air that's going into this. The pressure gauge on the compressor is currently showing 40 pounds per square inch of air going into this engine and it's about as powerful as a very small methylated spirits toy. Well less really, on these little toys at least the wheel goes round. So it's time to have a look at this in detail. In previous videos I have described in detail, particularly in the Model Engineering for Beginners series, how to time a steam engine. This is a little bit odd. Really speaking, the lobes of the eccentric sheaves should be at 180 degrees to each other. The arrangement on this engine is something I haven't seen before on a double 10 V. It's more usual to see a pair of eccentric sheaves, each of them with their own grub screw, gripping the crankshaft. But this is different. I'm not sure whether it's like this on the drawing because I don't have a drawing for a 10 V. The arrangement on this engine is that there is a hole through the eccentric that is actually clamped to the crankshaft and a peg goes into this hole, or in this case a bolt, and holds the other eccentric sheave in place. Now this is not good engineering practice because we've only got this tiny little grub screw putting a little bit of pressure on the crankshaft, holding two eccentrics in place. So this really needs modification. What I'm doing here is putting a drill shank through to locate the second hole. And I've just very carefully used an 8BA tap to cut a thread all the way through both of the eccentric sheaves so I can put an 8BA bolt in to hold the two eccentrics together. And before all the keyboard warriors out there start sending me messages, this is only a very temporary measure so that I can see what happens when the eccentric sheaves rotate in the correct position relative to each other. This is not the repair. All this is, is an assessment. Looking at the state of these eccentrics, I really think I need to make some new ones. The top end of the valve gear looks good, and the bottom part, the eccentrics, are not stunningly cleaned up. They're not very shiny. They look a little bit rough. What's on screen at the moment is the fitting of a bolt on the other eccentric sheave. So both the eccentric sheaves are pinned together. And now you can clearly see that both of the eccentrics are moving when I rotate the crankshaft via the flywheel. But have a look at the left hand one, and then look at the right hand one, and you will see they're not rotating correctly at all. But this still does not explain why I'm not getting any kickback from the cylinders when I put air into the engine. If you watched the last video featuring a double 10, the really horrible one, at least the wheel went round. It wobbled as the crankshaft was broken and not built properly, but at least the wheel went round. 
The only thing that's going round at the moment is me going round the bend trying to figure out why this is not working. I did notice some rather severe leaks around the inlet manifold, so I removed the inlet manifold and using some wet or dry sandpaper and a little oil, I thought it would clean up the inner mating surface of the flange. And I'm told by a viewer that you should always go round in a circle, so for his benefit, I'm going round in a circle whilst I'm doing this job. Generally, I would go from left to right, but obviously I've been doing it wrong all these years. You live and learn. Anyway, it's cleaned up, and I did go from left to right as well. But I turned the camera off for that bit. And to rule out any possibility of a leak between the inlet manifold flange and the gasket, I used some gasket compound as well. So I know that's not going to leak. But the steam chest is still leaking. Now I'm going to look at the other end of the manifold and see what's happening there because it really is leaking badly. And some oil on the joint shows me that yes it is leaking badly. Where the pipe is silver soldered into the actual manifold flange, it's leaking. So this needs re-silver soldering. What I'm doing in this clip is just re-timing the engine slightly, making sure that this eccentric is in exactly the right place. But, still no function. There's a little bit of damage on the back eccentric. You can see there's a mark on the side, and there's also quite a mark on the eccentric sheave. Maybe somebody's got a bit annoyed with this and put a pair of pliers on it. I find that the one thing you do need with these kind of jobs is plenty of patience. Picking up the engine and throwing it as hard as possible either against the wall or through a window is not recommended. I know that there are quite a few things wrong with this engine and the only way I can really fix it is to start again, strip it down, clean off all the paint because some of the paint is marked, clean it all up, dismantle it and rebuild it completely. And this of course is the universal problem with small engines. A lot of work needs to be done, time is money, so it's down to the owner as to whether he wants me to fix this engine or just send it back to him. For the moment, thanks for watching the video and I hope you found it useful.